Welcome back, everyone. We're here today, part two of our Cabral host calls, the weekend edition of the Cabral concept. Once again, thank you so much for your support of the show. I really do appreciate it. Without you, there would be no show at all. And one of the things that I love about being able to record a podcast every day for our community is actually seeing your questions each and every weekend. So I do my very best to answer six questions on Saturday, six questions on Sunday, every single weekend. And I've been doing that now for about six years. I think this is the sixth year. So we've answered lots of questions. I don't know what the math is on that, but we'll figure that out again pretty soon. Uh, but it's just, it's about being able to connect with the community. I try to comment as much as I can on, on YouTube to people and Instagram um, and direct messages. It's just, it's, again, one of the reasons that I went from having a two private practices in Boston to then being able to, to be out here in the whole virtual-based world and podcast and all that is because I knew what we were doing was working. And we were seeing over 20,000 appointments a year. And then I said, well, you know, I, again, what we're doing is fairly unique because we are bio-individualizing every single program. And so how do we do that across a much larger scale? And, and it's essentially evolved to first starting with answering your questions. That's literally how the show first started. If you go back to the first um, like 20 or 50 Cabral concepts, it was answering your questions like literally every day. I would just take one or two questions after the show and and that's where it's evolved and, and the show is really, I don't know, just kind of shaped into being able to go deeper on one topic a day, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, answer a majority of questions. But then the, the goal was to create an archive. And that's really what we have right now. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, there's a search bar. Always search that before asking your question. Just because I don't want you to wait six to eight weeks before um, getting your answer. And the second is scroll through the images at the top. And you'll be able to find a podcast on many different categories. And we go deep, like 50 podcasts just on that one thing. And if you listen to all of those, I'm telling you right now, your knowledge is just going to go to that next level. And the last part is you can he, you can write in every single day in our private Facebook group at cabralsupportgroup.com and you can get same day answers uh, and even find podcasts that you need just by writing in right there. So a lot of different resources, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, by the end of the week, my seventh podcast of the week, uh, my voice is, uh, is <laughs> always going in and out. So I'll do my best for you. Uh, let's get into the questions. First questions from Brian. Brian says, hi, Dr. Ball, just want to start by thank you for everything you do for me and so many people. You and Julia have helped me uncover a couple of root causes to some of my diseases, and I'm feeling much better overall. I travel quite a bit for work, sometimes have to stay in hotels, and I just find myself in situations where I can't really cook and it might take a lot of effort to find something healthy. I always take my daily nutritional support powder and shaker bottle with me everywhere for the morning and sometimes afternoon shake. Do you have any recommendations for eating clean lunches and dinners while on the road or somewhere where it's difficult to cook? Thank you so much. All right, Brian, great question. And always happy to answer these questions. I, you know, this is a great one. So um, before the pandemic, I traveled once to twice a month for three days at a time, every single month, uh, about nine months of the year, eight, nine months of the year, July and August, I don't travel. I, I just spending a lot of filming time and I don't travel during the month of December. So, or from like Thanksgiving through, through, um, January 1st. So I travel a lot. I speak a lot. I love it. I mean, I really do. Um, the traveling cart, the traveling part really does grow old. Part of what you're talking about right now. I don't like getting out of my routine too much, uh, especially when I travel West coast, which I do, I go from East coast to West coast. So this is exactly what I do. I do close to what you're talking about right now. So I bring my daily nutritional support powder and the rest of my supplements. That's super easy. And also I don't bring a blender. I know some people do. All I do is shake it up in a shaker bottle. You can see my shaker bottle right up there. It's right on the Equal Life website. It's easy. I can have all my travel powders in there. I bring my vitamin box, super simple. And, and that's it. I mean, that's what I do. And then I have fruit on the side. So before I leave for my trip, I bring fruit. So what I would typically put in my smoothie would be like, blueberries and a banana or so. Well, I just bring a couple bananas and I don't bring blueberries per se, but I bring my apples. And so then on the side, I can have my shake with an apple. It's, you know, really, really easy or shake with a banana. Super, super simple. So that's what I do. And, and I'm just eating three meals a day. So it's, it's easier for me. Um, some people do snacks mid afternoon. I do, you know, honestly, I, I do a smoothie in the afternoons a lot of the time, uh, for my weight workouts. I've talked about that before, but when I'm traveling, it's, 
a quick trip, like, I mean, not really a quick trip, like just last week, flew to California. That was all day Wednesday, did a three hour show on Thursday. Uh, then I took an hour ride North to San Francisco. Then I got, I had a three 30 AM wake up call, um, on Friday and I flew home because I wanted to be home uh, with my family that night. So uh, that was that. And so basically, it's well, it's like one day, the only day I could possibly work out was the Thursday. And I did that after my I did a hotel workout. Anyway, um, I do three meals a day. And all I'm doing before is I'm actually like looking on the plane, hey, like, where am I going to eat in my hotel? Okay, lunch is done. And then I'm typically just going to Whole Foods when I arrive. And I land at Whole Foods. And then I buy anything that I would typically like, you know, I, I'll bring a, I'll bring a couple of um, uh, whole food, uh, snack bars for the plane. Um, those that we have the cinnamon apple still in stock at equal life. Yeah. So that's it. I, again, I, I meant to answer this just like in a minute or two, cause I'm trying to give each question a minute or two, uh, to give everyone their due. But, um, I, I, I use a sprouts or an air one or a whole foods as one of my go-tos and I'm typically using their, um, hot bar right there or their salad bar. And I'm just making something simple. Like I eat really simple when I'm away, nothing gourmet at all, or, I'll use my one of my you know flex meals for the week. That might be a, a meal out. So that's all. I, I keep it super simple. Like I'll look for an ASI bowl for lunch. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to I'm trying to make the best choice that I can and keep it super simple. That's what I do. All right, anonymous is up next, Doctor Brawl. I recently ran the heavy metals and minerals test, and it was recommended that I start on a multivitamin for some subtle mineral deficiencies. I'm using the Equalife activated multivitamin and have noticed my urine being more neon yellow color. I am very well hydrated. My urine very rarely goes past a very pale yellow, uh, sorry, pale yellow, mostly clear. All right. Um, so is it a sign that it's not being absorbed or getting too much um, or offloading the excess. Thank you for all you do. All right. So here's a good example, though. This is just written by Anonymous, so I don't have to, you know, nobody has to take offense to it. But this has been written about many, many times on my podcast page. So you can literally just go to stephencrabell.com forward slash podcast and just type in like neon yellow or yellow urine or uh, you, you'd be able to find this answer. All this is, is this is excess like water soluble used up B vitamins. That's all that it is, honestly. Um, no harm has ever been shown from it. And here, why they're water soluble. So we give you the methylated form of these B vitamins, the absorbable form, the actual form that your body uses. So you don't have to worry about uh, MTHFR, gene mutations, MMR, MTR based issues, and it's all taken care of for you. So if you're taking um, these, you're going to have any excess, just going to be a little bit of neon yellow. Um, it's two in the morning, two in the evening. If you'd like to have a little less, then you just could take um, two in the morning, one at lunch, one at, at dinner, and you could do that. So that's all. It's just literally the excess water soluble vitamins. And that's also why you see it's a yellow powder. You can actually, ours are vegetable capsules. You can see right through it. And that's going to happen with any B vitamin at all. Uh, ours is just a, a much cleaner methylated form. All right. So hopefully that's helpful. And again, that, that happens to everybody. Leslie's up next. Hi, last year I was admitted to the hospital with uh, COVID pneumonitis and had oxygen for 12 days. I was hypoxic on admission, but not noticeably breathless. I had silent hypoxia. I have been on a good nutrition plan since hospital discharge, taking zinc, C, vitamin D, and I've just had a 12-week follow-up with an x-ray which shows resolving pneumonia. I feel quite well, but worried about the recovery of my lungs. My blood saturation is good at 99%. Can you give me any advice on what to do to improve my lung recovery? Many thanks. Okay, so this is where I give my medical disclaimer. I thank you for bringing it up. So I can't give you any medical advice. I can't give you any diagnosis, any cure, or medical treatment plans. What I do is I look at the underlying root causes for all health and dis-ease of the body. So here's the thing. Um, I honestly don't have to give you too much advice because you're doing great. I mean, that, that's the truth, right? You're doing great. Um, you're taking your... Basically, it sounds like you're taking the daily foundational protocol level two, which is what I do, and you're taking the immunity protocol, which is your vitamin C, your... Um, balance sink and your liquid vitamin D at, at about 4,000 IUs. Okay. So, I mean, I think you're doing fantastic. So how do we improve the overall lungs? Well, we want to do breath-based work. So I would actually, I have a bunch of interviews on breath work. You want to do nasal-based breathing, uh, which could honestly be as simple as, um, well, this is a great podcast with Dr. Belisa 
So B-E-L-I-S-A, I believe it is, at stephengrabal.com forward slash podcast. I would definitely listen to that one. That's a one definite. But you want to work on belly breathing, go for a walk and try not to use your mouth for breathing. Try to just breathe in through your nose, and you can breathe out through your nose if you'd like, or out through your mouth. But you just want to, don't want to take in the breath to, through your mouth, okay? Um, and there's so much that you could look into. Box breathing would be another great one. But really, I want you to fill your lungs, which is deep diaphragmatic breathing, all right? And that interview with Dr. Belisa is going to be very, very helpful. All right, good question. Diana is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for everything you do and your daily podcast. I have a question about digestive enzymes. Is there such a thing as being allergic to digestive enzymes? My son has alopecia areata, never had any stomach issues like bloating and vomiting, but he does when he takes digestive enzymes. He has tried three different, and they all have had the following comment. Uh, proteases, amylase, lipase. Any idea what could be the reason for bloating and vomiting after taking digestive enzymes? It also triggered a flare-up. I want to do the CBO protocol, but I'm afraid of him losing more hair because of the biofilm disruptor and die-off symptoms. He's 15 years old, and it's been very hard. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I totally get it. Totally coming. Totally understand where you're coming from. Um, well, it would be difficult to understand why he's reacting to these enzymes. He could certainly be having a reaction if they're on an empty stomach. It's very rare. I mean, this is the first time I've heard this, but you know that I keep an open mind, Diana, and I believe that uh, everything is possible. I mean, I've, I've been in a practice where I've seen everything. I mean, like we've, we've done well, like well over now a quarter of a million client appointments. Um, we, we see over a thousand people a month. So there's a couple, I mean, Yes, I always recommend trying different brands. I always recommend trying lowest possible dose. That's the thing too. Like let's say, okay, so two things. One, empty stomach, doesn't agree with the stomach, causes bloating and, and uh, digestive issues. That's a possibility. Have you tried doing the mid-meal? They're still effective mid-meal. I know they're always said to take before the meal to get into the stomach first, but they're still effective mid-meal. All right, second comment is... Um, have you tried multiple different companies? It looks like you have. It looks like you tried three different companies. Very interesting. Um... I'm having trouble trouble really giving you why this is because I've never seen it before in my practice. What I would say though is if you do the do the CBO protocol, if you do do it, right? It's your obviously your choice, um, and you begin with the floor film or the biofilm disruptor, which they're both biofilm disruptors. You'll want to use only one out of the four capsules. So you want to do just one on an empty stomach, uh, and not like all of them. That would be something to look at. And then if you're not able to, you would do the CBO protocol without the, uh, di without the biofilm disruptors for those first two months. So that would be that. I'd have to ask a lot more nuanced questions, and, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. Um, but I understand where you're coming from. Work with a practitioner. Honestly, work with an Equal Life team member or work with one of our integrative health practitioners, without a doubt, or a, a local uh, naturopath or naturopathic doctor, for sure. All right. Sorry, Diana. I'd love to be able to give you more. I just... You know, I need more back and forth, and I'm, I'm not able to do that, so I apologize. Michelle's up next. I have a family member who is just diagnosed with mitochondrial disease. Can you recommend Ayurvedic functional medicine approach, labs, or tests that she should run? Any insights would be appreciated. Love your podcast. Michelle, thank you so much. Appreciate you. All right, so yeah, 100%. Mitochondrial disease is such, again, like a misnomer. It's like IBD. Okay, so you have bloating, you have gas, and you have distension, and you go to your doctor, and they're like, oh, I know exactly what it is. You have IBS, and it might become IBD, and you're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Thank you for diagnosing me. What should I do? They give you a couple medications, and then you go home, and you Google IBS, and you're like, my doctor just told me I have irritable bowels. I have irritable bowel syndrome, and it might turn into irritable bowel disease, and you're like, Tell me something I don't know. Of course, I know I have irritable bowels. What does that mean? It's a no, it's a misnomer. It's like it's not a diagnosis. Okay, you're yeah. You're telling me I have symptoms. I know I have symptoms, right? You know when I had when I, <laughs> when I had chronic fatigue, it's like I go to a doctor and they're like, "Well, it sounds like you have chronic fatigue," and I'm like, "I know I have chronic fatigue. I know that. You don't need to tell me that. I'm, I came here telling you I have chronic fatigue, right?" And then they, then I got diagnosed with Addison's disease, and and it's like, okay, well, I get the diagnosis now, but I still of chronic fatigue. You're like, you just gave me a, a new name for it. So anyway, again, everything has an underlying root cause. Uh, we have a great, again, no, no treatment plans here, but we have a great product for the mitochondria. And it is the um, 
advanced new renewal system or the very least cell boost. I mean, clinically proven, like these are legitimately clinically proven products. However, you need to figure out what's the underlying root cause, right? While you're using something like that. So um, my recommendation is the big five labs. If you can't run the big five labs, you'll run without a doubt the starter kit. The starter kit will actually look at mitochondrial function plus gut, plus vitamins, plus detox, neuros, and then it will also look at your vitamins and heavy metals as well. So the starter kit is included in the big five. The big five is five labs. The starter kit is two labs. So that's where I would start. All right, good question. Uh, one more question for today. It's from Lorena. Lorena says, we all know how estrogen dominance and weight gain in the midsection are related. But this is interesting because there has been studies that showed how the risk of diabetes was reduced 62% in women currently using hormone replacement therapy compared to women who had never had hormone replacement therapy. One resource suggested that loss of estradiol, the primary human estrogen, from either natural or surgical menopause caused an abrupt reduction in metabolic rate. A tendency to increase fat around the middle, increase problems with cholesterol and triglycerides, and increase progression to metabolic syndrome. So which one is it? Does it cause weight gain or not? I'm confused now, and I only trust your advice. Ha ha. All right, Lorena, I can answer this for you, and I appreciate the trust. But honestly, I always say, listen, listen again. Like, go out there, gather your information. Here, here's the issue: people, um, they have to believe one thing, I, and I understand that. You know, believing in one thing, um, it gives you safety, it gives you security, and it gives you definiteness, right? But that's why, you know, when I talk about specific things, um, you know, again, I put out a, a post on Instagram that nutritional yeast can be a neurotoxin. And there were all these people who lost their minds. They literally, like, it, it couldn't handle it because there's a couple of practitioners out there recommending nutritional yeast. And, and I, I said in the comments, I said, what I said is absolutely true. Nutritional yeast has the same chemical makeup as MSG, monosodium glutamate. And monosodium glutamate can obviously convert to glutamic acid, and that can cause that's a could be a neurotoxin. People can't clear it well enough, but not everybody has that issue. And some people can actually get the benefits from nutritional yeast with all the B vitamins and, and other nutrients in it, right? So it's like, well, both are correct, but in a lot of people's minds, both can't be correct. The problem is it's something called bioindividuality. And in this case, it's actually a lot simpler. So if you have high levels of estrogen and lower levels of progesterone, you have estrogen dominance, even if the estrogen is normal. So you have all of the symptoms of high estrogen. So you have the weight gain, the water retention, the inflammation, the low mood, the more towards depression, uh, potentially adult acne, all, all sorts of issues, right? And, and sometimes even hair loss. But then when your estrogen goes too low, you also can have weight gain, bone loss, high cholesterol and triglycerides and hair loss and night sweats in both directions. So you're like, well, which one is it? It's never one or the other. And that's what I try to teach. It's, it's why I'm one of the only people teaching it this way. And, it, and it's the true way. It's, it is the truth, right? It's, it is the truth. And you can, cause you just see two studies, right? That's why you can't go by, you can't, I tell you people cherry pick the studies. So you can't go by that. That's also why are in our industry, people don't know what to make of me and whether they're on my side, and I use that in air quotes or not, there's no sides. But all that matters are the patients and the wellness clients we are trying to help. That's all that health and natural medicine should be about. That's it. So here's the thing. Why do you see this? Because what is most important in the human body is balance. You want your estrogen levels balanced. You don't want them too high and you don't want them too low. So what we do with women in our practice, post-menopause, when estrogen levels are lower, we use, tip again, we run, we run one lab, stress hormones, mood and metabolism lab. That's the lab that you have to run. That's it, stress hormones, mood and metabolism. So again, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash labs, you'll be able to find that. Then, if appropriate, we use DHEA plus a product called estrogen support. We naturally support estrogen levels to bring them up within a normal range. After using those products, plus anything else we recommend for balance, that's why we like the big five, if you can do the big five. Then we'll retest after about 12 weeks. We'll see that you're in the normal range. And if you're too high, we'll just bring it down a little bit. If you're too low, we add just a little bit more. It's honestly, it's bio-individualized, and that is why we're able to get such great results for our community, is because we don't guess. 
We literally give you what you need based on you as an individual, which shows up in your labs. And when you do that, you can honestly, you can forget about most of these studies. They matter, right? They matter. It's not that they don't, but you need to see what matters to you. That's what really matters in the end. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you, Lorena and everyone for writing in. I appreciate you. You're all the best. I really, I really do mean that. I love being able to answer these questions. I love our community. It's my favorite thing to do to be able to do this podcast, to be able to teach. So thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you haven't left a review yet, I would love you to leave a review, whether it's on Amazon or Google or Spotify or iTunes. If you could just take 10 seconds to leave that review, that would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Take care. And I'll be back tomorrow on our Mindset and Motivation Monday. 